Alright y'all, welcome back to Jamie's Crazy Life. I just, this is Christmas Eve 2018 and why I'm not home is I just dropped my mom off at my brother's house for Christmas Eve and uh, I drove her into town because she's on medication. She, she got from the chemo, she got a, a side effect of some neuropathy of her legs. And she's been on an antibiotic this week for an infection, which can trigger neuropathy. Go figure. Um, so her legs are bothering her today. And it's going to get dark in a little while. And I told her I would drive her into town to drop I would drop her off so she could have dinner and watch a movie or whatever they're going to do. So I don't know how long I'm going to sit and wait, but that's okay. i do anything for my mom. I got a sidekick with me, Prissy. I got Prissy. Prissy, say hello to the camera. Prissy's busy being a watchdog. Because we're sitting, I think, a couple blocks from his house in an abandoned... Uh, it doesn't sound as bad as it is. It's an, um, a closed-down Sitco gas station that used to be operating... Um, but th there's a main road in front of me, um, traffic going left and right, so um, I'll be fine. If it gets too dark and I get nervous, I'll, but I'm not in a bad part of the neighborhood, um, I'll move. But um, I have you guys to talk to, and I'm uploading pictures off of my cell phones, so I can keep myself busy. Um... I am not there because I don't have a relationship with my brother and his wife. And that's okay. I know everybody would say, and I've had people say who know about the situation, who said, oh, you need to turn the other cheek, you need to turn the other cheek. You need to forgive and forget. No, no, no. And the reason why I say no is this, okay. No matter how many times I forgave him for what he did, he kept doing it. No, you can never forget anything that's, that is done to you. Okay, this is my question. If you had a teenage daughter and she was in a verbally abusive relationship with a young man, would you tell her to get out of it or would you turn and say to her, oh, just forgive and forgive, forgive and forget him, sweetheart. He's only being, he's only your boyfriend. You know, you got, you love him anyways. Forgive him and forget, forget and forgive him. No, you would not tell your teenage daughter to do that. If you had a sister who was in a horrible marriage and the husband was verbally abusive, and she was miserable. You would not tell her, oh, just forgive him and forget. No, you would not. You would help your sister out of the horrible relationship. If your mom was in a horrible relationship with a man that was verbally abusive, you would not want her to stay in it. So, rather than I myself stay in a relationship with my brother that is verbally abusive... Because no matter how many times I told him to watch what he said, he didn't. I chose to walk away. Because I did not deserve to be treated in the things said to me that were said to me. I'm sorry. I just didn't deserve it. I did not do anything to provoke it. So, several years ago, I decided to write him a little letter. And I decided to tell him. That I had to walk away from the person I did not know anymore. And maybe someday my brother would come back. Well, it's been almost four years. And he hasn't attempted, really. I mean, yeah, when, my, when he comes by to see my mom, he'll go, hoy, or something. But all he wants to do is rehash up the crap that was set, was done and I don't want to hash it up. I'm you know, the only thing I wish for my brother and his wife I wish they would be happy. Happy people leave other people alone, right? So, I mean, he don't know me anymore. And, and the thing about it is it's sad. it's it's really sad though because up until up until it happened the abuse started happening and the verbal swearing at me, cussing at me, saying nasty, horrible things to me. Um, we were like this. I mean, I, I had uh, two sisters. One passed away. One, the other one, she's been in so much 
I mean, she's a criminal. She's been in so much trouble. You know, she and I are not close. Uh, but I expected that, you know? I kind of expected that because she lives a completely different lifestyle and stuff that I didn't really expect to be close with her. I figured, if anything, throughout my whole life, we would be on and off. And that's, you know, I expected that from her choices that she's made in life. And, you know, I was there for her when she went to jail. But when she got out, I wasn't the type of person she wanted to hang out with. You know, I don't do drugs and I don't do alcohol. So, um, but my brother, I really thought we'd be like this. If you would have told me, um, if you would have told me five years ago that, or ten years ago that at this point in my life, he and I would not be together, I would have told you, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ooh, was I wrong? It's very important, it's very important that when you, you get in a relationship with someone, that you don't, that you think about your relationship. Um, his wife is what put a, a wedge between us. Um, she, they were living on the same property I live on with my mom. And basically what would happen is I would be sitting at home, and if you, if anybody really knows me, they know when I get involved in a project, I don't like leave it. I'm like, I got, I'm, I don't know what I would call myself, but I'm like, I gotta get it done kind of thing. So I, if I start a knitting project, I may spend 10 hours knitting straight because I have this like, I don't know if it's the OCD problem with it or something, but I can be for hours and hours and hours and hours. And at that point in time, um, I was teaching myself to loom knit, board knit, uh, like the Amish do. I was teaching myself to do that, and I was in the middle of making lat robes for Sebring Hospital. So I would get started on one. I wouldn't want to put it down. Wouldn't want to put it down. And I could spend. All, I could be spending like, like I might have gotten up late because I might have been up late. So I might have spent like all afternoon sitting on the couch watching a movie or something and knitting, knitting, knitting. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my brother would come in my place, open my door, come in my place, start yelling, cussing, and swearing at me. Like, what do you do to my wife? Blah, blah, blah. And I would be like, I didn't even know she was home. That's how much I, I didn't understand what was happening. But he would start cussing me out and saying nasty, horrible things to me. And then I would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I would like, he would leave. And this would happen like on a regular basis. It's like she would say something and then he would come home and start yelling, cussing at me. And I'd be like, what the heck? You know, to the point where he started saying some very nasty derogatory things. And um, the last time he really cussed me a big one, I was like, please walk what you say. And I'm very thankful to this day. I'm very thankful to this day that I never ever um I, n I didn't cuss him back um the younger me <laughs> 20 some year old me if if he had done that to me might have been different but the 40 something year old me when this happened um the 45 plus just me um had already learned you know <sighs> Watch what you say because you can't take those words back. And I would say to him, you need to watch what you say because you can't take the words back once you say them. And he'd be like, watch what I say, watch what I say, watch what I say. And he'd just start cussing me out and saying some nasty, horrible stuff. So I have told my kids to learn from this experience. I told my children, when you meet someone and you get involved with someone, if that person does not like your family, be honest. Because if my brother had been honest that his wife does, really did not like us. Because um, we're not the same. She's not like me, my mom. She's not. She um, is all about name brands. Um, she wants everything nice. I wouldn't say she's like wears a lot of makeup and high heels and that fancy. She, But she does like name brands. Um... She's totally opposite. I mean, I like a good thrift store find. I like a bargain when I can find a bargain. I think um, I embarrassed her. Um, she tried to use a race card a lot in life. 
um, by saying that we didn't like her because she was Hispanic. Well, she used that race card up until my niece married a young man who was uh, Hispanic. And my niece, sorry you guys, I'm getting hot. My niece has a daughter who's half white and half Hispanic. So now that um, my niece's little girl is here on this earth, <laughs> my sister-in-law can't use the race card against us anymore. She can't make the comments. We don't like it. Oops, sorry you guys. We don't like her because uh, she's Hispanic. Uh, that, uh, you know, that that was never true. Um, but um, that's the card she used a long time. But I guess the, the, what I'm trying to get at in this little rambling is that um, I guess appreciate what you have, the people you have in your life. Don't take abuse from people in your life. You don't have to. You really don't. I did a lot of, um, when this first happened several years ago, I did a lot of uh, uh, praying about it and, and talking to some people about it. And um, just a few people still to this day say I should look the other cheek and totally forgive him and whatever. But it's not going to happen. I mean... I did had some very wise people say, you know, you might have to walk away, and and that's what I chose to do. Um, do I regret it? No. Do I miss a relationship with him? Yes, but as time goes on, it gets easier and easier, unfortunately. And that's a sad. That's the sad part of all this, is that what I thought we had like this, we would have our whole life, because when I was when he, we're actually seven to eight years apart. But I've always, I was always closer to him. He, he, I'm the oldest and he's the youngest of four. And I was always the closest with him. That's why I didn't think I would ever lose that. But um, I did. I did. Um, that's why, like I said, I told my children to be honest. If, if they ever meet someone they don't like them, be up front. And if that person really loves them, they will accept my, bro my, my children still having a relationship with family and stuff. Um, because if, if, if my brother and his wife had been honest, I would, I, I would not have made, I would not have gone out of my way to make life miserable for my brother at all. I would have been, I would have been very cautious of, okay, I understand she doesn't like us and I don't know why, but that's okay. She don't have to. And I would have been like, um, I would have been very cautious to make sure that when we went, did something together, make sure she realizes what you're doing and that kind of thing. And, you know, if, if she's very miserable about it, you know. But if my dad still had been alive, I think my dad would have had a good talking to him. I really do. I think, right, Prissy? Prissy never met her grandpa. But um, if my dad had been, it was still alive, my dad would have. This, I don't think it would have ever gotten this far because I think my dad would have had a good sit down with my brother and said, hey, she don't have to like us, but she's, you know, you're, we're still your family. Because family was very important to my dad. Very important. Sometimes my mom is unhappy about how things have turned out since my dad died. So, I, I can't fix it. But I try to make sure Mama does whatever she wants to do with my brother. If he calls her up and says, hey, let's go do this, I'm always supportive of it. At most 90, maybe 80%, 90 to 80% of the time, he cancels on her when he makes arrangements. Oh, I got to work. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. So she actually thought he was going to cancel today on her. When we were getting dressed for me to bring her in the town, he called and I was like, oh, is he canceling? Because he cancels all the time on her. And I'm, like I said, I'm supportive. Anything she wants to do for or with them, I'm supportive of it. It's her choice. I'm not going to sit there and tell her, don't go spend time with them. Don't go do that. It's her choice. Just don't make me do it. I, I've rambled enough about this, so... Chrissy and I are just going to sit here for a little bit. And uh, we have a jelly peanut butter sandwich if we get hungry. Don't we, Prissy? And we have a jelly peanut butter sandwich. And we have our lovely little drinks. 
and uh, maybe I'll do another video while I sit here, a rambling video. Who knows? I will be doing hopefully a video here at the end, of, toward, uh, t closer to the end of the year in a couple week, couple days. I'm a reflection about the year, but that's to come. And I don't know, maybe I'll do another video yet tonight. Who knows? But I'm going to stop this one now because it's about 15 minutes. So if you like what you just heard, if you like my videos at all, like, subscribe, share with family, friends. Uh, I know I don't have that many followers, but that's okay with me. I don't care. Alright, talk at y'all in the next video. Bye. Okay, you guys, welcome back to Christmas Eve. <laughs> Janie's crazy life. I'm going to give you a quick look at the tree and stuff. Because Christmas did happen this year. It did. So hold on. Let me flip you around. Okay. Everybody's in bed. And my son put together the husband's grill. So there's his grill. It's all buried. but And then he got a USF apron. And I got him new grill things. And some charcoal. So this is Christmas. It's happening. Looks like a lot, but it really wasn't a fortune spent here. The kids had to have stockings. Prissy's down here guarding it all. Right, Prissy? But Christmas is going to happen. The tradition is sweet rolls in the morning. So we're having sweet rolls for breakfast and spaghetti for lunch. And there's a whole story behind that spaghetti thing, y'all. I'll I'll never live it down. Unfortunately, spaghetti is now a tradition. Um, years and years and years ago, I was so busy, busy, busy with work and everything. It was Christmas time. And I always cleaned out the refrigerator really good, you know, do a good clean out prior to um, um, Christmas. That way you have room for all the leftovers and stuff. Well, I was so busy with working. I was working a lot of hours with Christmas. Um, I cleaned out the refrigerator and kind of like for about a week, we kind of like ate up extra stuff in the house, you know. Well, I cleaned out the refrigerator and I forgot to go Christmas meal shopping. I was that busy. I just forgot with running around with the kids and getting them their things, doing their things and and working and Christmas shopping and I don't know. My, you know, it might have even been the year my dad died. I don't remember. But I forgot to buy the turkey and the ham and all the fixings. And the only thing we really, we didn't really have a lot because I had, I had had a side-by-side -side refrigerator at the time. And then a whole much. So I had kind of like even cleaned out the freezer so that I could put like leftovers and stuff in it. And I forgot. I forgot it by Christmas. So, what we had on hand was stuff to make spaghetti. So, guess what we had for Christmas that year? Spaghetti. So, ever since that year, we have had spaghetti. So, tomorrow I am fixing spaghetti and homemade lasagna for lunch. So, I'm going to pause this video until tomorrow, Christmas morning. And I will see you all later. I'm going to bed. The kids are, I think my daughter's still up. And I think my son is still up. So my husband went to bed. My mom's in bed. I'm going to go to bed. So I will see y'all tomorrow. Merry Christmas. Hi, uh, you guys. Welcome back to Janie's Crazy Life. I don't know if anybody does this, but I did this. Do you give back a gift to someone? who's not in your life, who gives you a Christmas gift. Well, y'all saw in a previous video, I dropped my mom off at my brother's so that he, she could spend Christmas Eve with them. Okay? So, she was there about three hours-ish. A little over three hours when she called me and told me she was ready. I was only about three blocks, four blocks away. So, Prissy and I go pick her up. Everything gets, her, her, her gift bag gets put in the car. And she tells me that he had 
sent her way a uh, box of chocolate candy for me. Well, being that we don't have a relationship and he's always talking crap about me, why do I want anything from him? So I told Mama, she says, well, he said I could have it if I decided not to give it to you. I said, no, I don't want him thinking I had it. So I got it. I took it. I received it. So I told Mama that I'm sorry, but I don't want it. So I nicely go to the side of the truck, get it out of the bag, and I proceed to walk up to his door. And I didn't even have to knock on the door. He was like watching, I guess, from the window. I walked up and said, I don't want it, but thank you. And of course, he made some comments. Um, as I walked away, telling me that I had a problem and that he hoped that I ha I lived a nice life or something or something. I don't know. He, you know, I wasn't going to stand there and argue with him on his yard, but I told Mama, I said, I don't want anything from him. I wanted her to have a good time. I'm glad she had a good time because she said she had an excellent and wonderful time with him. I mean, she said she really enjoyed the evening. And I would drop her off or take her again in a heartbeat for her. Because that's her son and she wants that relationship with him. But I don't. I, I just don't. So I did it. I, I gave back a gift. I don't think I've ever given back a gift before. But it wasn't like it was wrapped or anything. It was just... You know, half half heartedly given, anyways. So, I just don't know if anybody else has given back a gift. I did. I gave back a gift, and I don't regret it. I wasn't upset or anything. I just, I wasn't going to argue with him at his door. So I did it. I gave back a gift. So. I know that Christmas season is all about giving, you know, uh, and everything, and not receiving. Well, I didn't want to receive. So. Oh, my kid is calling me. It's Christmas Eve late at night. So I will catch you on the next video. So if you like what you see, like and subscribe. Catch y'all later.